Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hoshisaki Technical Training. My name is Lee McElfresh. I'm here with Mr. Dave Rivera from Technical Support. Today, we want to help you understand all Flaker model audible alarms. Dave, thank you for joining us. Could you give us an explanation on the different Flaker alarms and what they mean and how they affect our machine? Sure. Let's start with the one beep. A one beep is a low water safety. That means that the machine was filling and it took longer than 90 seconds to fill. The things that we're gonna check on this is we're gonna confirm that the float switch is working. The float switch on this machine is a dual float. It has three wires coming off of the top. You have an upper float and a lower float. Your black wires, your common, your red and blue wires are gonna be your upper and lower float. You're gonna test each float with continuity 10 times in a row. Up is closed, down is open. If it fails once, it's getting replaced. Now we're gonna move over to the water valve. If the water valve is not opening up completely, then we're not gonna get the right flow out of that water valve and we're gonna create this problem. If the water valve is not opening and not letting enough water into the machine, we'll be replacing that water valve. There is a strainer on the inlet of the water valve. If the machine doesn't have a water filter, that would be the next step to confirm that the strainer is clean. If the strainer is clean, then we can move over to the water filter and confirm that we have water coming out of the water filters. If the water filters have been there for a while, they could be clogged and need to be replaced. Now on the two beep, the two beep means that the machine was switched to the drain position for more than 15 minutes. To correct this issue, all we have to do is switch the machine over to ice. Let's talk about the three and four beep alarm. The three beep is that the machine opened up the high pressure switch two times in one hour. The four beep is that the machine opened up the high pressure switch three times within one hour. The things that could cause a high pressure switch to open is that the machine is building up pressure in the condenser, uh, 400 to 430 pounds of pressure on the head pressure switch and that what causes it to open. The things that we need to check is we need to confirm that the condenser fan motor is running. We need to confirm that the condenser fan motor is not overheating and shutting off, that we're getting power to the condenser fan motor and the com capacitor for the condenser fan motor is good. We also need to confirm that the condenser is clean and that the liquid line valve is opening and opening all the way. The way that we're gonna confirm this is by taking a temperature during the free cycle while that liquid line valve is energized. We should see the same temperature on both sides. If the valve does not have the same temperature, we'll be replacing the valve. We also need to check the pressures on the machine to confirm that the machine is going off on high head pressure. Just checking that the high pressure switch is open doesn't tell you everything. We need a good idea of what's happening on the inside of the machine to be able to correct this problem. Let's talk about the five beep. The five beep means that the machine didn't consume any water for 30 minutes. These are the things that we're gonna check. We're gonna first start with the float switch. We're gonna confirm that the float switch is working properly 10 times in a row. On that machine, it has a dual float, uh, upper and a lower float. There's three wires coming off of the top, red wire and a blue wire, and a black wire. Your black wires are common, your red and your blue are your upper and lower float. We're gonna check each side with continuity 10 times in a row. If it fails once, it's no good. Now, we can move over to the water valve. We need to confirm that the water valve is not leaking by. And this is a visual test. The water valve is sitting on top of the reservoir on that flaker, so it'll be easy to determine if the water valve is leaking by. The water valve is leaking by, we can move on to the next step. Let's talk about the TXV. If the TXV is defective, we won't be feeding enough refrigerant into the evaporator, and we won't make any ice. To be able to confirm that the TXV is working properly, we're gonna to need to do two things. We need to check the pressures while the machine is making ice, and we're gonna take a temperature on the outlet of the evaporator. With that information, we're gonna go straight to the service manual and we're gonna check the data chart. We're gonna confirm that the pressures are close to what we have, right? What we checked on the machine. If the temperatures are coming out a little bit warmer than normal and the pressures are a little bit higher than normal, there is a possibility that we may need to replace that TXV. Now that we confirm that the TXV is working, we can move over to the liquid line valve. 
to confirm that the liquid line valve is energized, is it only energizes during the free cycle while it's making ice. And we're gonna check and confirm that we have 115 volts going to the coil and that we have the same temperature on both sides of the valve. Uh, that's gonna tell us that we have refrigerant flowing through it. If we have a 10 degree differential there, the valve is closed and we don't have any refrigerant flowing through it, the valve needs to be replaced. Once we confirm that the liquid line valve is working properly, now we can move over to a low charge scenario. Now a low charge scenario could be a leak. It could be that the machine is undercharged. It could be that the machine is overcharged. This is how we're gonna confirm that. We're gonna check pressures five minutes into the free cycle, and we're gonna compare those pressures to the performance status sheet. Once we do that, we'll be able to determine if the machine has enough refrigerant or not. The next step, is to check if the machine does have a leak, we need to repair that leak, recover, and weigh in the charge. If we don't find a leak, we can recover and weigh in the charge. Any times you open up the system, we should replace that dryer. Once we confirm that the charge is correct, now we can move over to uh, checking if the compressor is inefficient. Now we covered this on the alarms before, so we're gonna be very brief. We're looking for equalized pressures and low amperage while the compressor is running. Those are the two scenarios that we need to confirm that we have an inefficient compressor. If we do have those two elements, then we're replacing the compressor with the dryer. Once we confirm that the compressor is working properly, now we can move over to the headmaster. Now the headmaster scenario only applies to remote machines. Remote machines that have the condenser outside, the headmaster's inside. If the outdoor temperature of the ambient drops lower than about 60 degrees, the headmaster starts trying to bypass to maintain head pressure. If the headmaster is failing, we're gonna bypass at all times. So to confirm this, we're gonna take a temperature on the inlet of the headmaster and the bypass line. The bypass line should be relatively close to your ambient temperature. If the bypass line is closer to your inlet, the headmaster is leaking by and we'll be replacing the headmaster. Let's talk about the six and seven beep alarm. The six beep alarm means that you have a low voltage alarm and you're not getting the proper voltage to the control board. The seven beep alarm is that you're getting a high voltage alarm. That means that the voltage coming into the board is coming in too high. On the K8 connector terminals one and two, which is gonna be a white with a red stripe and a light blue wire, that is the power coming into the control board. We need to see 24 volts between terminals one and two. If we're having a low voltage alarm or a high voltage alarm, that means that the power coming into the board is not adequate. We're gonna move over to the transformer and we're gonna check the power coming into the transformer. At 115 volts, that transformer is supposed to put out 24 volts. But if the transformer is not getting 115 and the voltage is a little bit lower, like 90 volts, then we're not gonna be able to put out 24 volts. We're gonna put out like somewhere around the 17 volt area. Uh, if the voltage is coming in a little bit higher to the transformer, then the voltage coming out of the transformer is gonna be a little bit higher. So if the voltage coming into the transformer is 136 volts, the transformer is not capable of putting out 24, we're gonna put out like about maybe 30 volts and the board is gonna go off on that seven beep alarm. To be able to correct this, we need to correct the voltage going into the transformer. Could be checking the voltage on the back side of the machine or having an electrician correct the power going to the unit. Let's talk about the eight beep alarm. The eight beep alarm means that the gear motor failed to run. So let's first talk about the CCR relay. The way that it works is that the board sends out power through a pink wire to energize the gear motor. That leg of power goes to the gear motor and energizes the gear motor, then it goes to a relay, the CCR relay. It energizes that coil and closes two contacts with white and orange wires. Those contacts go back to the board and that's how the board knows that the gear motor is running. If those contacts fail to close, then the machine automatically goes on an eight beep alarm and we'll be replacing the CCR relay. Now let's talk about the gear motor fuse. If the gear motor fuse is blowing, that means that the gear motor is overamping. We're gonna break this down into four steps. Maintenance, electrical, 
mechanical, and refrigeration. Let's start with maintenance. If the machine is heavily scaled, the gear motor is gonna pull more amps than what it's required and it's gonna blow that fuse. So let's make sure that that evaporator is super clean. Let's talk about electrical. Any loose connections between the board, the fuse, the fuse and the capacitor, the capacitor and the gear motor could create the gear motor to overamp. Let's make sure that every connection there is nice and secure. Now let's move on to the capacitor. We need to make sure that the capacitor for the gear motor is within spec. Let's talk about mechanical. For this, we need to verify that the bearings are not worn inside the evaporator. There's an upper bearing inside the extruder and there's a lower bearing in the lower housing. To do this, we need a 20 thousandths of an inch bearing gauge to be able to confirm if the bearing is worn. If the bearings are worn, we're replacing them both together. We're not replacing one at a time. Now let's talk about refrigeration. When we talk about refrigeration, we could be talking about a low charge scenario or a dead spot in the evaporator. Now the dead spot in the evaporator, this is how we're gonna diagnose. We're gonna remove all the water out of the machine. We're gonna remove the auger out of the inside of the evaporator. We're gonna flip the float switch upside down and we're gonna turn the machine onto ice. Once the machine turns onto ice, the gear motor is gonna start Five minutes later, the compressor starts up. About seven minutes in of the compressor running, you're gonna start developing a frost on the inside of the evaporator. We don't want a dead spot. So if it freezes, you have a blank spot, and then it refreezes, that would be considered a dead spot, and that would make the gear motor overamp. At that point, we'll be replacing the evaporator. Let's talk about the nine beep alarm. The nine beep alarm means that the primary bin control didn't shut the machine off. The secondary switch opened for a split second. Let's talk about the primary bin control. The primary bin control can be an infrared sensor, an ultrasonic sensor, or a thermostat. If one of those sensors is dirty or not working properly, it could cause this problem on the machine. Let's talk about bin control number two. Bin control number two is located on the top of the chute that delivers the ice into the bin. On the inside of that chute, there's an actuator paddle. If that actuator paddle gets pushed out for a split second and the switch shows open, the machine automatically goes off on a nine beep alarm. If the actuator paddle is missing a carter pin and it's not sitting properly, it could cause this alarm. If the micro switch is failing, it could also cause this alarm. And if there's a loose connection between the switch and the board, it could also cause this alarm. Now, in the rare occasion, there is a refrigeration problem that could possibly cause this alarm. Now, what you're gonna see is that at the top of the evaporator, you're gonna see a big ball of ice forming at the top of the clear chute. And eventually it gets pushed over into the bin and activates that squish. If that happens, I want you to contact tech support for further assistance. Let's talk about the 10 beep alarm, freeze up detection. This is only for cubelet machines with a Flaker Plus control board. To cause this alarm on the unit, the unit needs to see on the thermistor, which is located on the suction line, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit three times in a row. Okay. To correct this problem, we are gonna reference everything on the eight beep alarm. And if you need further assistance, please call tech support. Thank you for joining us today for Hoshisaki Technical Training on Flaker Alarms. If you need further assistance, please contact us at Technical Support.